Hello, welcome to my channel. Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and today I want to discuss a long running debate, an issue that has been bantered back and forth across the internet, across tables, across bookstores, maybe across movie theaters for a long time. This is the debate about which version is better, Jaws the novel or Jaws the movie. When you listen to some dedicated book readers, a lot of them will say, the book is usually better, except Jaws as the one that um, they think that the movie is better. Well, I'm going to dive into this debate and I'm going to settle the issue once and for all, definitively. And if you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. Well, last week for Horror Mayhem Movie Week, I read the novel Jaws. Now, I did read this book way back when, when I was probably way too young to actually have supposedly read books like this, but I did read it. But I actually saw the movie version first. Again, I was probably too young to be seeing movies like that, but my parents did not care. And I saw that movie more than once. And I have to admit, when I was that a young little tyke, I loved the movie Jaws. I thought it was great. And then I read the book and I thought the book was okay. And um, part of that was my youth. There is a part of youth that is instantly attracted towards film. Now, I kind of outgrew that as I, as I, as I grew up, that, you know, once I graduated from high school and I finished university, my, my love affair with um, the movies had, it was pretty much dying out. But let's get into the weeds and start getting into some specifics here about the, the novel versus the film. And I will not go into real small detail, a lot of, de you know, getting down into the weeds too much. I don't want this to be a long video. But one of the main arguments against the novel is its middle section. There is a section after Chief Brody has discovered that there is a shark off Amityville, Long Island. Um, and in this video, there is going to be spoilers galore. So if you have not read the book or have not seen the movie and you don't want to have either one of those spoiled, now is the time to stop watching. Let's get back to where I was. Chief Brody has discovered that there is a shark off the Amityville, Long Island, and he has been convinced by the mayor, mayor and the, the city council not to close the beaches because closing the beaches, of course, would um, harm the summer season. And you get into some details now about why the mayor does not want the beaches closed. And his reason is that um, he has some investment and some investment partners. And the investment partners is the mafia. And um, they don't want the beaches closed. They want as much revenue coming into this town as possible and not too concerned about um, who gets eaten. That was entirely eliminated from the movie version. They thought it was just, it was, it was, it was too much for a movie. The movie was supposed to be a straight up action film and um, talking about the mob just would slow down the action. There is talk in the movie about not wanting to spoil the summer season, but it really doesn't tell you why other than they just don't want it spoiled on Amityville Island. 
I'm not sure why the movie moved it from Long Island to some other type of island. That's just a movie thing. And, you know, I did not mind the mob subplot. I thought it got a little more detail into the mayor and, and what motivated him. Because um, if that town closed for the summer season, he was in a heap big of personal trouble. So that gave a little more background to the characters. Another huge thing in this middle section is um, the story of the oceanographer, Hooper. Hooper grew up on Amityville, Long Island, and um, he knew the chief's wife very slightly when he was a young boy. He sort of had a crush on her, the way young boys are attracted to women, you know, about 10 years older. I believe when he met her, he was about 10 or 11, somewhere around there, somewhere where young boys get crushes on girls. But now he is an adult and uh, he's a rather prosperous adult. He is handsome. And the chief's wife is going through, let's just say, some issues with her marriage. She was from one of the, the upper class of the Amityville. She was a, supposed to marry in to a fine family, but she married a policeman. And now she is having second doubts. She is also supposed to be, even after three children, incredibly good looking with a fine figure. And um, she decides she's going to have an affair with Hooper. And she pursues him rather strongly. She is the instigator. Hooper probably would have not done anything without the, the chief's wife pretty much forcing the issue. So you have this marital affair in the middle of the book. There are some people who claim, and I, I believe this is true, that um, the publishers, when the Jaws the novel was uh, released in 1974, wanted wanted this uh this affair to happen they they wanted a little bit of sex in their books because um popular books were supposed to have sex back then but what that does is that makes brody a cuckold man because he cannot control his wife especially not control her sexual needs which he should be satisfying and then there's this this issue that does he know his wife had an affair with Hooper. Yes, he does sort of know. He, he cannot quite prove it, but there are uh, circumstances about where Hooper was at what time that leads him to believe he could have been with his wife. So you have uh, an issue. The chief and Hooper in the book are not buddies. They are, they're, 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 they're not necessarily antagonists but there are major issues between them. And that is um, one of the huge differences between the book and the movie. A lot of people don't like this affair. I think the affair brought a lot of depth to the story because this is a story of man against nature and man against himself. Brody really isn't all that much of a, a strong man in the book. Um, he is police chief, but uh, both Hooper and Quint in many ways are better men than he is. And he is the one who goes out with the shark with them. He was not intended to go out on the boat with Quint. Quint wanted to go out on the boat all alone, especially in the book. He did not think he needed people. He sort of needed a second hand, on his boat, so he, he reluctantly agreed to Hooper, but he didn't want Brody. Now, in the movie, Brody and Hooper are buddies. They, they bond really quickly early in the movie and become, if not friends, they're together, they're partners. And Quint is sort of an outsider. Um, he, he's, he's, he's the one that they, they're going up against. And it's only 
when they're, they're late at night on the boat. They start singing those songs. And all of a sudden, the male, there's male bonding going on in the movie. And that male bonding is supposedly going to help them catch the shark. There is no male bonding in the novel. It's really every man for himself against the shark. And I like that, that much more than the male bonding scenes in the, or the, the male bonding type of a storyline in the movie. Maybe that's just a personal preference. And then the real issue comes at the end of the book. In the book, Quint really almost single-handedly kills the shark. Um, he kills it by his fishing skills. He, he knows how to kill sharks and he wears the shark down through harpooning him and uh, just gently wearing him down saying, a shark is not a monster. It is not an immortal creature. It can die. And that's how it dies. By the time at the end of the book, um, there are two accidents. One is with Hooper, who goes into the shark cage and gets eaten. He does not get eaten in the movie. Someone said in a video somewhere that the original script of the movie had Hooper die, but there was a technical issue where they couldn't film it, so they just changed the end of the script and, and let Hooper live. I think it's a stronger story when Hooper dies. Quint also dies in the book, not quite as uh, spectacularly as he does in the movie. Of course, movies have to do Spectacle, that's just what movies do. And that really is my biggest beef with the film version is they just have this huge spectacle ending with the death of the shark. There is some foreshadowing with the oxygen tanks, but the whole idea of Brody throwing an oxygen tank into the shark's mouth and then have that shark conveniently swim it, swim in on the surface where he can uh, shoot that tank with his rifle and blow it to tiny little bits. I think that's just pure Hollywood and um, it really sinks the movie in my adult mind. It brings it down at least a peg or two. So let's talk about which one is finally better. And the answer to that is Mu. That's M-U that is a non-Western philosophical term. It is very often associated with uh, Buddhism. It basically means emptiness. And what that is, if someone asks you a question and there really is no answer between the two, it's saying that you're asking the wrong question, that rethink what you're asking. And that is kind of what I'm asking people to do here. I don't think there is a way to say that the novel is better than the movie or the movie is better than the novel. It really depends on your point of view and what you like. Do you like the Hollywood style of storytelling with a lot of spectacle where the men bond together to go up against a strong foe? Or do you like the ambiguity? Brody is supposed to be the hero of the novel, but really he doesn't do much but observe. And in the movie, he really does take out the shark in the final scene. You can sort of imagine in that movie that if Brody were not there, the shark would continue to eat people. But in the book, Quint had brought the shark down and the shark was swimming towards Brody and Brody was going to be shark lunch our shark breakfast, but it dies of its wounds before it can get to Brody. And I found that much more meaningful in my mind. So there you go. Those are my opinions. I still say the answer is Moo. My personal preference would be for the novel over the movie. But again, I can see why some people do like the movie more because they're movie people over book people. Thank you for watching and keep on reading.